discussed uh, what is basically soil and uh, what are uh, types uh, of soil erosion right so in uh, soil i told you the basic profile of soil uh, what are the different layers of soil displacement of top layer of soil is called soil erosion right and there are two uh, major processes by which soil erosion happens geologic erosion and uh, uh, what do you call accelerated accelerated erosion right so a geologic uh, a geological erosion is a natural process by which uh, soil erosion keeps on happening in soil for many decades for many years but the problem is with the accelerated erosion which is uh, a result by result of uh, uh, human activities like anthropogenic activities like uh, burn forests or deforestation or uh, uh, overgrazing by animals right these are the things uh, re uh, responsible for um, accelerated kind of erosion so uh, apart from that i discussed in the last lecture the types of uh, soil erosion right what are the drivers of soil erosion so i told you there are uh, three major factors of uh, soil erosion one of them is uh, water one of them is wind and third is erosion so in this lecture i am discussing about the uh, first of the types of uh, erosion that is called water erosion so uh, water erosion uh, how uh, water could be a lethal uh, a weapon in uh, causing the top layer of soil to be displaced uh, we can think about it because this is the most uh, powerful tool by which nature uh, disturbs the soil profile i have to say right so among the three of the uh, factors responsible for erosion water is the most uh, damaging cause of uh, uh, soil right and there are different types of uh, uh, water erosion i will be discussing them one by one but before that we need to understand how uh, water causes erosion right so basically water erosion is a process which uh, which occurs in three steps right so uh, these three, three steps are uh, detachment transport and deposition right so what are these these things like uh, suppose there is a land right there is there is slopey land you have this there is slopey land like this and rain is happening from the top right rain is happening and the soil particles which are there on the top layer of the soil as i was telling you there are many layers of the soil right top layer of the soil because of the heavy rain right or because of uh, movement of water on to this right if at a particular place rain occurs at a very faster rate right or in huge amount it is absorbed by soil normally right when rain happens in a land so this is a tilted slanted land in which rain is happening normally what happens when rain happens rain occurs the water is uh, absorbed by the soil and goes down to the lower profiles and from there it goes to the ground water and to the aquifer right normally this is the process of uh, rain absorption by soil some part of it is utilized by soil some part of uh, for the plant some part is being absorbed by the aquifers which are mixed with the ground water and moves slowly right it's a type of a uh, uh, water bank right normally this is the process but what happens when excess amount of rain occurs in a particular land if excess amount of rain is occurring there is a process which is called surface sealing surface sealing surface sealing this happens now when the rain is happening from the top here the small particles of soil normally clay particles as i told you there are sand silt and clay particles mixed in the soil small so the particle is clay particle right these smaller particles are the first one which get moved by this heavy amount of rain right right and these particles because they are smaller in size they move from one direction to other direction slowly slowly and they make a layer they make a layer like this a layer top layer onto the 
surface top layer surface of the soil. They make a layer, and because clay particles are very small, the macro uh, micro pores are more. Macro pores in these particles are less. The spaces between two particles, right? The spaces between two soil particles. If suppose this is soil particle, right? If this, this is clay, if this is clay, then uh, the space between two particles are less. This is called micro pore, right? Micro pore. When sand particles are there, they are bigger in size, right? So the pore size is larger. This is called macro pore. Macro pore, right? Macro pore. This size. So when soil is having more sand content, it has macro pores. The part The, the space between two particles are bigger. When the soil is having clay particles, the uh, pores between the soil particles are uh, less, micro pores. So when a soil which is having clay particles on which rain happens and water moves the soil, top layer of soil, it slowly slowly makes a layer. Right? This layer is called surface sealing. Surface sealing. When the surface is sealed, the next rain that is coming, right? It cannot be. It cannot be. The next amount of rain, heavy rain that is coming, it cannot be absorbed by the soil inside. Right? It cannot be absorbed by the soil soil inside because there is a micro pore layer made. The surface is sealed by that clay particle layer. So the more uh, rain is coming, is not being uh, seeped in into the soil, right? Then what will happen? The soil, this part, rain, rain, uh, heavy rain, this will move on the surface, right? This will move on the surface. When this will move on the surface, right? It deep, it, it transports, right? It transports all the side, so, uh, soil, top layer soil, to the other part. So suppose from this A point to the B point, right? The smaller particle they will move first. The larger particles, sand particles, they will they will move later. But slowly, slowly this process occurs. So the first part, the uh, the the detachment of soil, the, the smaller particle movement from one position to the other position by raindrop or by movement of water is called detachment, right? Well, because of detachment, surface uh, sealing occurs. Surface is sealed, and what uh, water uh, becomes higher on the top layer and moves the soil away from the top layer. This is called transport. Transport of the top layer of soil particles, right? And when these soil particles are transported by the flow of water, right, and it is deposited. It gets accumulated at certain other place. Suppose from this. A place to this B place, right? Right. This process is called deposition. Deposition, right? So, uh, soil erosion is a process in which not only the point at which heavy rain and uh, movement of water is happening that is eroded, but that place is also eroded where this soil is getting deposited. B point. A point and B point. So soil erosion by water is a on-site and yeah, soil erosion by water and by uh, soil erosion by water erosion is a. You have to say it's a on-site off-site. Consider. Process. Soil erosion uh, by water is a on-site slash off-site consequences process. That means that the point at which rain is ha uh, happening at a huge amount, that part is damaged, and where these uh, top layer of the particles uh, are being uh, moved from. Right and get accumulated at this, this other point. That also is 
eroded because huge amount of large particles are uh, accumulated there. So it has on-site and off-site consequences. Right? Water erosion has a on-site and off-site consequences. So this uh, rain uh, raindrop which is occurring, which I am saying that heavy amount of rain is happening at a particular place, the ability of this rain to cause erosion is called raindrop erosivity. Raindrop erosivity. Right? The ability of raindrops to cause erosion is called raindrop erosivity. Right? And when raindrop erosivity, erosivity happens, right, a surface is sealed from the top and water cannot go down because the surface is sealed. Macropores are less on the soil. Right? Uh, Macropores are less on the top layer of soil. So water cannot go inside, right? When water cannot go inside the soil, it will move. Water will move, right? When the movement of water happens with, with a force which can cause damage to soil, that is called run of erosivity. Run of erosivity, right? The ability of run off to cause erosion. The ability of run off to cause erosion is called run of erosivity, right? So there are two terms I am using here: raindrop erosivity and run of erosivity, right? So these two factors are major factors which play a very important role in water erosion. Not all the time, raindrop erosivity and run of erosivity are related to each other. Not all the time. Most of the time, they are related to each other, but not at all the time. Why I am saying this? Because sometimes rain, rain occurs at a particular place, it, uh, the surface sealing happens on the, on the top layer of soil, water cannot go in, right? And uh, it moves and it becomes runoff, right? So rain, uh, 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 rain, uh, rainfall has become uh, runoff. But sometimes runoff also happens because of heavy snow meltdown at some places, right? Which is not, not related to uh, rainfall, right? So these two pro these two terms, raindrop erosivity and runoff erosivity, they are interconnected sometimes, but not all the times, right? The ability of the rainfall to cause erosion is called raindrop erosivity and the ability of runoff to cause erosion the movement of water the movement of water over land right to cause water uh, water to cause erosion is called uh, runoff erosivity right so these are the two factors which are responsible uh, then and the processes I, and I told you the process is there and there are certain factors which are responsible for uh, 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 water erosion, which are uh, climatic factors, vegetative cover, topography, and soil properties. Soil properties, I, I discussed with you here, that those soils which have uh, higher macro macro pores, uh, two particle, you know, two particles, distance between two particles are bigger, right? When the macro pores are high, then the uh, water seepage inside, infiltration of water inside, inf infiltration rate of water going inside will be more and soil will be less eroded, right? When micropore will be there uh, on the top layer of soil, uh, those particles like clay will be there on the top layer, the water cannot be absorbed by, uh, by the soil, water cannot infiltrate inside the soil, right? So it will, uh, the soil erosion will be more in those soils. So those soils which have a larger amount of macro pores, they will have uh, less chances of getting erosion. But those soils which have uh, larger amount or higher amount of micro pores, they have more chances of getting water eroded. Right? Then comes topography, land size, land degree, right? How it is tilted. On these things also the uh, erosion by water uh, is uh, dependent because if land is more tilted the movement of water will be more right so topography is also one more factor then vegetative cover is also there 
more the plants uh, and tree species are there on a particular surface, less will be the erosion, right? Because more the canopy of the trees are there, so the raindrop that is coming, its impact will be reduced, right? More bigger the canopy of the tree, right? More the raindrop is 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 diverted from directly uh, going to the soil, right? More the uh, plants or trees are uh, uh, rooted down into the surface, more it encourages the soil together and less it will be eroded, right? So more the vegetative cover, less will be the erosion. Then climatic conditions like how much is the precipitation rate, how much rainfall is happening at a particular at, at a particular uh, rainfall is happening at a particular place, right? Then temperature, right? At a particular place, like those soils in arid and semi-arid region, where uh, most of the time dry weathers are there, but suddenly rainfall occurs at the Union Mall, there is a chance of ample amount of chance of uh, water available. Those soils which are uh, humid and subhumid, where frequent uh, rain uh, rainfall occurs, there is also proper uh, uh, amount of chances are there that uh, water erosion can happen. So in the next lecture, I will be discussing the types of water erosion. Uh, I hope this lecture is helpful for you. Thank you. Welcome to this uh, second lecture of the series of uh, uh, erosion. Right, uh, soil erosion we are discussing, and uh, we have in the previous lecture we have discussed about uh, what a soil is, what are the different layer of soil, uh, profile of soil, right, and how these uh, different layer of soil they uh, go upside down, right. Uh, I also told you that erosion basically is a natural process. Slowly, uh, erosion happens over the time, over a period of time, and. Uh, when uh, due to some uh, external factors like rain, water, or uh, rain, water, water uh, runoff, or uh, through wind, or through tillage erosions, if this erosion process is accelerated, this creates a problem. So I discussed what is geological erosion and what is uh, accelerated erosion. Then uh, we understood that the mechanism of uh, uh, erosion erosion by water. Right? Uh, we told you that. Uh, there are three steps of uh, water erosion, which is uh, uh, detachment, uh, transport, and deposition. Right. So, I will go in a little bit more depth of uh, these things in this lecture. Uh, two basic things that I discussed there uh, in the first lecture was uh, uh, rainfall erosivity and runoff erosivity. Right. Uh, there are two of these factors which are uh, majorly considered in uh, water erosion, and uh, when we are designing a uh, control process to, con to control these kind of water erosion, we study these two things uh, rainfall erosivity and runoff erosivity. Right? Rainfall erosivity, uh, I told you that uh, it's an it's a intrinsic capacity, uh, if I uh, say uh, in selected words, intrinsic capacity of uh, uh, rainfall to cause erosion. Right? And runoff erosivity uh, is, is the uh, intrinsic capacity or ability of the runoff water to cause erosion. I, I also told you that uh, rainfall erosivity and runoff erosivity, they both are uh, most of the time interconnected, but not all the time. Right? These things I have discussed in the previous lecture. So, uh, one of them, rainfall erosivity, uh, this also depends upon uh, four or five major factors. Uh, one of them is uh, amount of rain, uh, amount of rain that is happening at a particular area, right? Type, its type, its distribution, right? And different installation processes are there by which the amount of rain can be measured, right? Second is uh, intensity of the rain, right? Intensity of the rain means uh, it is basically uh, measured in uh, millimeter per hour, right? Uh, amount of rain happening per hour, right? Millimeter of rain per hour. Uh, it is measured like that. So intensity of rain is, is also can be measured. Then terminal velocity of rain. Uh, uh, the speed at which at last the raindrop is hitting uh, the surface, right? So the, the, the more uh, bigger uh, size rain, right? Bigger uh, droplets of the rain with high speed, high terminal velocity can cause uh, more damage as compared to smaller drops, right? With uh, lesser velocity, right? So terminal velocity uh, is also one of the factor. And the third is, uh, fourth is drop size and drop size distribution. So 
the amount of rain in, in a particular area that is happening, the size of that uh, droplets uh, that are uh, coming down and its distribution in different different areas, right? These also are a important factor on which the, the magnitude of water erosion depends. So these uh, drop size and drop size distribution can also be uh, measured. There are certain uh, radar and uh, uh, other techniques are also there. Like uh, ad adsorbent papers are used uh, with uh, water soluble dyes. So uh, it is called drop stain technique. Drop stain technique. Drop stain. Then uh, uh, radars can also be radars, radar techniques, and uh, more imaging techniques can also be used to measure the uh, drop size and drop size distribution. Right? Uh, when uh, water uh, uh, hits the droplet hits uh, the, these uh, uh, drop stains, uh, there is absorb uh, uh, water absorbing paper is there, and there is uh, water soluble dye. When it hits the dye spreads, right? It can be can be measured and can give you an idea about the particular drop size distribution. These things are studied to understand uh, rainfall uh, erosivity better, right? More better you understand rainfall er er erosivity, the intrinsic, intrinsic capacity of rain to cause erosion, more uh, you can develop uh, techniques to uh, avoid uh, the damage caused by the rainfall, right? So uh, mostly uh, rain, uh, high rain in dry areas, sudden sudden high rain, uh, rain in dry areas with wind, right, can cause more damage, right. Uh, especially the arid area, the dry area, and heavy amount of rain occurs, right, uh, with heavy amount of wind, wind also, it can cause more erosion. The top layer can easily be detached by raindrop, right. Other factor uh, is uh, runoff erosivity, right. The ability of the runoff to cause erosion. Now, if I have to explain you in simple words what is uh, runoff erosivity, uh, I told you that uh, amount of rain that is uh, happening at a particular area, right? Uh, some amount of it is absorbed by the soil, right? It goes infiltrates down to the surface, right? But the due to surface sealing, right, some amount is left on the ground or if, if in case of water erosion, a major amount of it is left on the ground and it becomes a runoff, right. So if uh, runoff has to be uh, described, it has to be like uh, runoff is equal to uh, input of water, input of water minus output of water, output of water. Now input of water could be what, it could be uh, rainfall, right. It could be rainfall, it could be uh, snow melt down also, snow melt process, right? These, these two could be uh, input. Then uh, what could be the output, right? Uh, output could be uh, say uh, absorption by soil, by soil, then uh, evo transpiration evotranspiration or evaporation right uh, infiltration right I mean different things like if uh, rain is occurring at a particular uh, place maximum amount is, is absorbed some amount is evotranspired Evaporation is done, transpiration is done. After the uh, use of the water by soil, by these things, whatever water is left, left, that can become runoff water, right? Or overland flow, it is also called. It is also called overland flow or surface flow. Surface flow, right? So, after uh, rain, uh, uh, rainfall, whatever water is being absorbed by soil, right, whatever water is left from the rain, it can become uh, runoff, right, it can become runoff. So, this runoff uh, is a study, right, to control the geological processes, like 
to design uh, this runoff uh, uh, erosivity, runoff erosivity, or uh, runoff can be uh, measured or can be uh, calculated to develop models, right? Develop models to stop erosion, right? To stop uh, stop uh, water erosion or design uh, better techniques to avoid uh, uh, water erosion. Models can be developed, right? Models can be developed uh, based upon uh, runoff erosivity. Then, uh, uh, what do you call uh, agroforestry techniques can be developed. Agroforestry techniques uh, can be developed to stop uh, erosion from happening due to uh, runoff erosivity. Runoff erosivity, right? Uh, Agroforestry basically means it's a land management technique. A riparian buffer or some other uh, planting of trees can effectively be done. Selective plants or trees can be selected based upon calculation of uh, runoff erosivity, right? Which type of trees will be more effective in controlling the soil erosion by water if we plant them there, right? If on a surface water erosion is happening, or soil is being taken out. So we can, uh, by uh, properly studying runoff erosivity, uh, we can design uh, which kind of trees or plants can be uh, grown there in that particular area or soil, so that runoff can be uh, uh, stopped. Runoff, runoff can cause less erosion. Then, uh, uh, what do you call uh, the sediments or polluted materials that have, that has been. Uh, taken from one area to other area, the on-site and off-site consequences of uh, water erosion that, 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 that I told you, right? That uh, water, when it moves uh, from one area with the, with the soil to other area, right? It brings the soil to other area and deposits it, right? So in between, whatever uh, chemical, chemicals or sediments it is bringing, chemicals or say, uh, sediments, sediments, right? Uh, it is bringing from one area to the other area. These all can also be uh, measured, or an idea about these things can also be uh, given uh, to you by calculating the uh, runoff uh, uh, of water or runoff erosivity. That that is the purpose of uh, studying these two parameters. Uh, rain drop erosivity and uh, runoff erosivity. So, uh, in, this, uh, in this lecture, I discuss uh, rainfall erosivity and runoff erosivity, its relationship, right? The factors on which these two depend. Uh, rain of, uh, rainfall erosivity depend upon the amount of rain, intensity of rain, the terminal velocity at which it is hitting the ground, right? And its drop size and drop size distribution. These are the important factors in rainfall erosivity. Then in runoff, uh, the amount of rain that is coming, right, input uh, minus the amount of uh, rainwater that has, been, that has been utilized by the soil. Whatever is left is called runoff, right. That runoff, the ability of this runoff to cause erosion, the movement of uh, top soil of uh, top soil by water, that is called runoff erosity, erosivity, right? This can also be studied, and there are certain models which are developed on this. And for raindrop erosivity, also there are certain models developed uh, based upon kinetic energy equations that we, we will discuss in the coming lectures. So this lecture I am ending it here. Next lecture we will dis uh, we will discuss about different kinds of. Uh, water erosion. There are five, six major kinds of uh, water erosion that we will discuss one by one in the. Welcome to the third part of this lecture, uh, which I am covering. That is soil management, soil erosion and its management. And uh, we have we have covered uh, soil, soil profiling, uh, different types of uh, erosion, and one by one we are discussing different types of erosion in which. Uh, in earlier slide, uh, previous slide, I have I have pre previous presentation I have discussed. Uh, water erosion, its mechanism and uh, different factors on which water erosion depends, right. So in this particular uh, presentation, I will discuss different types of uh, water erosion. 
as you can see in the whiteboard, I have written uh, six different types of uh, water erosion, right? Which are splash erosion, internal erosion, rail erosion, gully erosion, tunnel erosion, and stream bank erosion. Now, all these erosion depends upon uh, rainfall and runoff, right? Which we have discussed. I told you that rainfall and runoff, most of the time, they are interconnected, interconnected to each other. So these categories of uh, uh, say uh, water, water erosion is mostly based upon uh, flow of water. Uh, if water flows heavily, right, shallow flow is there or a heavy amount of water is there, heavy runoff is there or uh, shallow runoff is there. On, on these categories, uh, on these factors, these kind of erosions are dependent. Say for example, the splash erosion. By the name it is clear, splash erosion is a kind of is erosion in which uh, raindrop uh, which is coming from the top, it hits the ground, suppose this is the surface of the ground, right? If it is the uh, surface of the ground, right? And raindrop is coming from the here, top, right? It, the terminal velocity is so high that it, at very high speed it hits the ground here and makes a splash, right? Makes a splash kind of a uh, phenomenon, right? Be because I told you the terminal velocity is an important factor in raindrop. Uh, terminal velocity could be of uh, at the maximum uh, 35 uh, kilometer uh, per hour, right? So if at that speed a raindrop is hitting a surface, right, it can make splash. If heavy amount of rain is happening at a particular place and uh, raindrops are hitting the ground at this uh, speed, uh, splash can happen, right? When the splash happens, uh, when the splash happens at a particular uh, place, uh, there are certain big structures form, formed on the ground, right? Big structures are formed from, uh, from on the ground like this, uh, large, large uh, uh, circle-like structure, which are called craters. Craters, right? Craters. So when raindrop hits the ground at very high speed, splash uh, occurs and crater formation uh, happens there at, at that particular uh, position. So crater formation is a characteristic feature of uh, splash erosion, right? So this, these craters uh, can be measured by certain mathematical formulas, right? To give you a better idea uh, how much amount of rain at what speed uh, it would have uh, hit the ground that it has made this crater, right? So this equation uh, for, for calculating the crater is d is equal to k r rho v square upon uh, into 1 upon 3, right? d is the uh, size of the crater, uh, k is constant, r is the radius of the crater, rho is the density and v is the velocity of rain uh, which is at which the, uh, the rain is hitting the ground, right? So these crater formations uh, can be measured, right? Uh, due to heavy bombardment of rain drop, these kind of erosion happens, right? It mostly depends upon the rainfall erosivity, right? Heavy bombardment of rain happens, crater formation happens and this is called splash erosion, right? Second kind is uh, rail erosion and third kind is inter-rail erosion. They both are uh, most of the time rail erosion and inter-rail erosion are very, uh, uh, they are very near to each other, right? Uh, rail erosion mostly happens due to shallow flow of water. Shallow, uh, shallow flow, shallow flow, due to uh, shallow flow of water, these kind of uh, uh, rain erosion happens, right? Shallow but faster, it, if a particular runoff is having, uh, is moving, uh, with a sh uh, it is shallow but it is moving very faster. It can make different kind of rills into the uh, surface, right? So distance between, uh, if, if suppose you are seeing a, uh, a, a land like this and water is moving from here, this, this direction, right? And it is moving sh in a shallow way but very at, very at a very high speed. So it will make small, small channels here. Channels like this, right? One channel, two channels, right? 
feature on the protein like this can make. So these small channels which are made here, you can see, right? These are called rills. Rills, right? These are called rills. Rills, right? And the space between two rills, this is this is is called interrill. Inter rill, right? So uh, interrill basically this is this is uh, uh, what do you call this can be measured. Interrill can be measured by this formula called di is equal to ki into i into s, right? Di is the uh, uh, interrill uh, the detachment trait. K is the uh, uh, constant, right? I is the intensity of rain and S is the slope factor, right? If a, if a line is more slopey, more uh, interrill erosion can happen, right? So apart from rill and interrill erosion, there is one more kind of erosion called gully erosion. Gully erosion mostly happens due to heavy flow of water, not shallow flow, but heavy flow of water. Heavy runoff or heavy flow of water. Right. When uh, a water of movement of water happens in uh, in a very uh, deep or heavy amount, it take, it cuts the ground. Right. It cuts the ground from uh, and and make a kind of a cavity on the ground. Right. And this cavity could be uh, of uh, zero point three meter uh, length and zero point three meter uh, width. With right, right. So these uh, when water moves in the ground in a very uh, heavy amount, it cuts the ground and makes uh, a uh, a structure, a U or V shaped structure. U uh, U or uh, V shape structure. That is why it is called. Gully, right? A gully formation happens due to heavy movement of water. Gully formation of U and V shape or V shape can happen, right? And that is called uh, gully erosion, right? Uh, basically, when the shear strength of the soil is less than the uh, shear strength of the water moving on the top of it, this kind of erosion happens. When when the shear strength of soil the soil holding to each other, each each particle is more, right, than the flow of heavy water. Then the gully uh, region, the gully region doesn't happen. But when the movement of water, movement of heavy water on the surface, uh, the shear strength of moving moving water is more than the uh, shear strength of the uh, say uh, soil. These kind of U or V shaped structure, gully formation uh, happens in uh, this kind of gully region. Then uh, fifth kind of erosion is called tunnel erosion, right? Tunnel erosion. So uh, tunnel erosion by the name it is clear. Tunnel, tunnel formation uh, occurs in these kind of uh, erosion. Uh, how does tunnel happen? Uh, tunnel uh, formation occurs uh, on a particular surface. This happens because if when I say that there are layers of soil, A layer and B layer and C layer like this, no? So water slowly seeps down, right? Lateral flow of water and seepage of water to the uh, B layer. Normally, if the B layer of the soil uh, leave the A layer, suppose this is the uh, this is how I drawn in the first lecture, right? Uh, these are the layers of the soil, right? So uh, this suppose this is A layer, right? Uh, this is A layer. And this is B layer, right? So when water slowly moves down the down the surface uh, on the inner layers, B layers of the soil. If uh, B layer uh, is high in uh, sodium content, right? Uh, sodium soils, right? So also if if the horizon B, the lower uh, level of uh, uh, surface B horizon is more sodic in nature, right? It makes the uh, top layer weaker. But the top layer is uh, holding together because of uh, amount of plants and grasses. They will be holding it together for some time. But the B layer is slowly, slowly getting weaker. And suddenly the B layer comes down. And when the B layer comes down, 
the top layer suddenly goes into the ground, right? And makes a big structure, tunnel-like structure inside the ground, right? This mostly happens, uh, this kind of uh, tunnel eroding mostly happens when the B layer uh, or B horizon of soil is sodium in nature and this happens because of, uh, normally it happens because of uh, uh, what, do you care, what do you call animal uh, burrowing, right? If animal, more, more of the animals are there on the surface and they are tapping uh, the ground uh, by their feet, right? Uh, this causes the top layer to get weaker and suddenly it goes down under the surface. Uh, to the under the surface and this is this kind of erosion is called tunnel erosion, right? There are recl reclamation processes are there uh, by which the erosion can be uh, made normal, right? This is also uh, uh, reclamation processes are deep ripening of the soil and due to, uh, because of some tillage activity also we can reclam reclaim the soils which are uh, suffering from tunnel erosion. Tunnel erosion is also called uh, pipe erosion, pipe. Pipe or tunnel like structure uh, happens in tunnel erosion. Pipe erosion. Right. Then the sixth and final kind of uh, erosion is stream bank erosion. This normally happens um, at a place by the name of this here stream bank means the sides of the river. Uh, this kind of erosion happens there. Right. Movement, having, uh, movement of water uh, runoff from the sides of the uh, river can undercut the uh, land, right? If the land is not having proper trees and plantations, this, this can be cut, right? And this, this kind of erosion is called stream bank erosion. This all happens because of the uh, runoff or uh, side uh, runoff of the river. If it is at a slant land, it is very faster, it cuts the ground uh, sideways, right? So these kind of stream bank erosions can be uh, reclamated or can be averted if we uh, apply certain agroforestry technique like uh, riparian buffer management, riparian buffer, uh, riparian, riparian buffer. So these kind of stream bank erosion can be uh, averted or, or, or halted if we plant uh, long, long trees at a stretch near the streams. Right near the stream banks, right? The planting of long round trees near the stream bank is called a riparian buffer, right? It's a kind of a agroforestry technique, a land management technique by which this kind of uh, stream bank erosion can be avoided, right? Agroforestry, I uh, will discuss in the coming lecture. So, these are the different types of uh, uh, water erosion slash drain, interval, gully, tunnel, and stream bank erosion. Each of them has certain characteristics, right? Like stream bank erosion happens due to rainfall. Oh, sorry, uh, splash erosion uh, occurs due to rainfall, uh, heavy rainfall. Rill and uh, over interval erosion they happen because of uh, shallow flow of water. Rill and erosion happens because of shallow, shallow but uh, strong flow of, uh, of water. Interval erosion uh, this happens because of concentrated shallow flow. In this. Uh, shallow flow of water happens, but in internal erosion, uh, concentrated shallow flow of water happens. This can cause uh, kind of uh, for a channel formation uh, on the on the surface of the uh, what you call small channels uh, can be formed uh, on the soil surface. Those uh, channels are called rills. The space between two rills is called interval, right? And these are two different kind of uh, erosions. They are very much related to each other. Then there is gully erosion in which uh, uh, movement of water is heavy uh, and fast. It can take the soil uh, in huge amount and cause a big formation of gullies, right? These gullies could be uh, U or V shaped in structure, right? And uh, this happens because of the shear strength of water is very high as compared to the shear strength of the soil. Then uh, fifth is tunnel erosion in which uh, uh, sodic layer, sodic uh, soil in the B layer can make the top layer very loose, right? Top layer are, are bounded together by grass, by plants, but suddenly when the B layers are uh, weaker, slowly, slowly water is seeping down, lateral flow of water is happening to these uh, uh, B layers and making it uh, weaker, suddenly the A layer goes down, right? In form of tunnel or pipes, right? It goes down. 
right? Then the fifth, the sixth kind and final kind is streamlined erosion, in which uh, when the river is flowing, the water run runoff of it under uh, the cut it cuts the sideways of the uh, land, right? This can be reclaimed by uh, certain riparian buffer planting of long trees along the uh, stream banks. Uh, these can uh, this type of stream bank can be stopped. So in the in this particular uh, lecture or the, and the previous one, I have discussed water erosion, its mechanism, right? The factors responsible, rainfall erosivity, erosivity runoff erosivity, erosivity, right? Um, types of water erosion, these things at length we have discussed. Uh, uh, next lecture, I will be discussing uh, wind erosion, right? And after that, I will discuss uh, tillage erosion as well. So I hope this lecture uh, is happy, is uh, will be happy, will be helpful for your uh, exams or, or for your say preparations for other uh, uh, competitive exams. Thank you so much for watching.